Music Business What Is This is a podcast that focuses on the ever-changing music industry and presents issues and concerns that the average and above average musician has or will encounter. Hey everybody, my name is Richard Johnson. And I'm Jeremiah Hunt. Today we're going to be talking about finances and keeping good records. Mm -hmm. These things are necessary when you're in any business, but we're talking about the music business. And one of the things I've realized is your records will help set you up for the future. Now, when I'm talking about records, I'm talking about receipts, invoices, anything that's going to keep track of your finances and anything that surrounds that right check stubs um, all of these things we're going to discuss today you're going to need okay Um, when someone says financial manager to you what what does that make you think financial manager just well I guess someone who keeps track of your finances okay Um, whatever you spend and whatever your income is Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay and most companies have a department Mm. that does that yep and here's one of the things that always comes back on musicians especially when you're starting you don't have a company generally most younger people have their folks or parents at home but we're talking about you're in college now university you're doing gigs yep people are paying you and we're not talking about the amount but you still need to have some type of reference because if you don't it's going to hurt you in several ways and you may not realize it till much later Mm. okay one of the reasons why i think you should have some type of just pure record we're just talking about a record to remember that you had a gig it's important number one for your taxes right and some people say oh I've never paid taxes before you know it's true you may not have paid taxes but you need to be aware of it because you're either going to pay or you've paid and not realize it and you don't want to be in a situation where you don't have records to verify what you were paid And lots of times getting those records aren't that difficult. Um, You may have to ask. Mm. Um, And the first step in doing that is just asking someone, hey, can you send me a receipt Mm. if it's necessary? Now, today, a lot of people are paid via Venmo or PayPal, um, Zelly, and those different types of formats. There is verification of it. So you have records. So you can go right on there and print it up and you've got it right there. Yes, that's popular. But what happens when someone pays you in cash? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, I want cash so I don't have to claim it. All right. Yes, we understand that. Um, There's a couple different ways you can look at that. You cannot, excuse me, you cannot claim it. And it is what it is. You don't have to put that on your taxes. But you may want to think about, depending upon what that amount is, claiming it because you may need that to buy something later on. Mm. Right. And depending on what you're trying to buy is going to depend on whether you should claim it or not. Technically, you should claim everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So you should do that. Um, It's your decision. But you don't want to get down the road and say, hey, I made X amount of dollars. I'm trying to show it to buy this apartment and I have no record of it. But this is what I made. It's in the bank. I have the money, but they're asking me to show verification of it. Most of the time, if someone hires you, they'll give you a receipt immediately after. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is be tracking people down a year later. Yeah, that's you don't know where they're at. They don't remember the gig. You don't remember the gig. It's easier just to say, hey, can you send me something, some form of verification um, that if you need to show it, you have it. Just the other day, I was going through a situation uh, with a client um, and they were asking me to help them with a grant. And I said, oh, you've done all these different things. It's, you know, this is going to be easy for you. We just have to write it. You have receipts from the past two years. You did blah, blah, blah. Um, And they said, let me get back to you in two days. They got back to me and they said they can't find the receipts. Mm. 
Mm. Okay, so this leads me to the next question. Did you ask for the receipt? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's the first thing. So you got to ask. And then the second question is, if you did ask, did you lose the receipt? Right. <laughs> right. Because you got to have it. So that's why we're talking about financial records. First of all, you got to ask. And then you got to make sure once you ask, you put it in a place where you can find it when it's needed. That's extremely important. Okay. Um, now let's talk about some different terms revolving around uh, your financial stability. These are very basic, but things you should really know um, so you can make an uh, informed decision about what's going to work best for you. Mm. Everybody's different, but in the end, it's still a business. And if you look at most structures of businesses, they are, they're very similar. They're, they're going to have some differences, of course, but your options options of what type of business you want to be because whether you realize it or not, you're a business. Yeah. If you don't look at yourself like a business, you're not going to make that money that you really want to make. Mm. And although you may be looking at your friend or homie as your friend, there's a reason why they're successful or making money and someone's giving them information or they're operating like a business. Mm. Right. So you have to be able to read through the fine lines. And a lot of these things, they're not going to tell you. Mm. You're going to have to do some research and find out. OK, so let's talk about different types of company structures. Generally, there are three types of companies that you can be. So let's talk a little bit about the first one. Um, could you read us the definition of a C Corp? Uh, C Corporation or a C Corp. What is this? So a C Corp is an independent legal entity owned by its shareholders. A C corporation's profit is taxed twice as business income at the entity level and the shareholder level when distributed as dividends or realized as capital gains. OK, that was a whole lot of P's and D's and pup, 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 pup. Uh, so let's break that down just in general. So you have an idea. C Corp. First of all, most big companies are C Corps. Most of them, not all of them but most of the big ones, right? So I'm not gonna name names just because I don't want them coming after me, <laughs> but just do some research um, about some of your favorite companies. You'll be able to find out within a matter of seconds if you go online. Um, and having a C Corp, first of all, it says you're taxed twice. Or the, not you, but it could be you, but there's, double taxation. So you want to be aware of that if that's the company you choose to set up. Now with a C-Corp, there's a lot more formalities that you're going to have to go through. You're going to need a board. Um, you're going to need some advisors. You're going to have, um, there's going to be a lot more detail in setting this up. And it's not to discourage you, but you have to be clear on what your vision is in the long run. A C Corp is not the easiest to set up, but it may be the best for you in the long run because of your type of company. Right. So you you may be saying, well, I just want to play music and tour. OK, so a C Corp may not be the immediate style of company you want right away. But if you're thinking in the back of your mind, oh, yeah, I want to do videos. I want to have hats. I want to have T-shirts. Um, I want to be able to sell my product to the world. Then you really want to start looking at what company is the best for you. And if you want it to go public. And when I say public, that means where other people have shares of your company. Mm. If you just want to have it be all yours all the time and you have full say and control, that's an option. But. When you hear about these companies going public and they go from a million dollar company to a billion dollar company, it's now because it's public and several different people can get involved and they're doing investments and it's more opportunity for you. Mm. Right. So you have to be aware of that and you can always create another company. You can add to it. But I'm just giving you some basic information on what the difference is. OK, so you have a C Corp. Now you have an S-Corp. Could you read us that definition? 
So the S corporation stands for sub chapter corporation or sometimes small business corporation. It's a special tax status granted by the IRS, Internal Revenue Service, that lets corporations pass their corporate income, credits, and deductions through their shareholders. Okay, this form of company is probably the least popular, right? And there's a reason for that. Um, The structure to set it up is similar to a C-Corp, but there's a little bit more involved. The the benefit of it is um, the structure of the taxation is a bit different. So you have to figure out, okay, am I going to go public? And if so, how can I pass on these taxes to other people? So this gives you a different structure. So it's not necessarily double taxed, but it will allow you to pass on some of that financial um, responsibility to the other people in the company if they're part of it, right? And with this comes several other things. Um, so the S Corp, I will say, is definitely not the most popular. But once again, you have to really look at what type of company, what what is your vision first and then decide, okay, this is the company I see or the direction I want my vision to go and what company best fits that Mm. okay so i've seen a lot of musicians that are really working have c corps and llc's so this is the last one we're going to talk about an llc and this is what i have and i know several people have this and we're going to talk about why so many musicians have this can you read us that definition? Uh, yeah. So the LLC stands for limited liability company, which means its members are not personally personally liable for the company's debts. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me first say, generally, these companies, LLCs, are the easiest to set up. They're also the cheapest. <laughs> and that's probably one of the reasons why you'll see several artists have them. They generally don't take that long. You can find um, the templates for all of these online, but the easiest to f- fill out is an LLC. And an LLC varies in every state. Um, Illinois is different than Oklahoma. so you, And the price for it is different as well. Mm. Right. It's also different in Delaware. When you start looking at what companies are and where their address is, it's interesting. You'll find some of the biggest companies are all in Delaware. Mm. When I was young, I started to notice and I said, well, why are they all in Delaware? And a lot has to do with the taxation, the amount of income. And what is the state giving these companies to be there? Mm. Right. And you may live in one state. And it's possible to have your LLC in another state, but you do have to have a registered address. Right. So you want to look at that. The other thing is you're going to need a P.O. box or some type of address to get mail. Mm. So if it is in a different state, you're going to need a parent um, or a place that you can get to someplace close or have it forwarded so that you can get that mail because that mail is going to go there. Mm. Another thing to consider is some states will not let you have a P.O. box. You can list the P.O. box, but they still want a physical address so they know that it's going to a person. Mm. Um, And the prices can range from anything. I've seen thirty five dollars to set up an LLC. I've seen hundreds of dollars to set up an LLC. Um, So you want to consider this. Now, with all these companies, you also have yearly fees um, that you have to calculate. Mm. Right. So every year. I get a form in the mail and an email saying um, I have to pay my yearly upkeep for my company. And that varies as well, too. That can be fifty dollars. If you miss it, um, it can exponentially jump. Right. So you want to be aware of these things. Sometimes people say, oh, I didn't know. The state doesn't care about I don't know. You missed it. Here's the fee. Pay it if you want to have it. Some states, after a certain amount of time, if you don't pay it, your company is dysfunctional. Mm. And that's the last thing you want 
is for it to be dysfunctional because even though you're not thinking about it, that big gig is going to come when you need it. Right. Right. The other thing, too, is you may want to set up a bank account in your company's name. Um, my recommendation for that is to set that up at a different bank, mm. not do it at the same bank for several reasons when it comes to taxes. And also, um, when you're dealing with outside sources, you're going to find that certain banks give you certain benefits. Mm. Right. Generally, they're similar. But for instance, a priority for me has been um, international wire transfers. And the reason for this is is because when I do tours, sometimes companies from overseas, they want to pay me and it's an international wire. Mm. Right. So when they're paying me, the fee, there's a fee for that. Mm -hmm. And the fee generally changes according to the amount. The higher the amount. The fee for the transfer usually decreases or goes away. Mm. But the structure changes according to your bank. Right. So that's one of the first questions I ask because I'm a touring musician. Yeah. And a lot of promoters and companies that set up tours overseas will pay you, but it's a wire transfer. And I don't want to have to be paying fifty, a hundred dollars out of my money for a gig when I could be at a bank that says, Oh, okay, if it's over three thousand or five thousand dollars, it's free. We covered. There's no no transfer fee. Mm. Right. So that's important to me because yeah. I've been working for this money. I want to put it in my bank. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I bring that up because I had a situation that happened um, a few years ago where I was in Europe. The promoter paid everybody in the band and I didn't I didn't get my money. Mm. Right. And I'd worked with this promoter before, so I knew he was worthy, trustworthy. Mm. But there was an issue with the bank. Right. So what happened is the money was sent. But when it was sent, it got rejected for some reason. Mm. And I used this guy before, no problems. Mm. But something internally, we ended up finding out happened with the bank. So it got sent, it got sent back to him. He didn't realize it. So I asked him about it. By this time, a month had gone by. Oh, it got sent back. The bank was calculating transferring fees every time. It went this way, fee. Now it got sent back, fee. He has to send it again, fee. Wow. Right? So my money's going down. Wow. <laughs> right? Wow. So I'm sitting there saying, okay, so eventually we decided to send it to the band leader. Okay. At this point, the band leader sent it to me. So we got it straight. But it was for a reduced amount because of all the fees. And he was like, well, it's not my problem. Wow. And my vibe was like, it was not my problem. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now this guy I've been working with, we had a good relationship. He's like, well, I've never had this happen before. And I said, I understand it. I'm not accusing you, but I've never had this happen before. Mm. What can we do to make this right? Well, you need to deal with the bank. I'm dealing with the bank, but the bank's telling me you sent it. Mm. You originated. So you have to do some inquiring. Yeah. And he, he, he did some, but he really didn't want to do it. Right. <laughs> right. So I'm saying that you want to be aware of the uh, bank you're with because there's certain benefits that can ultimately affect you. Yeah. Right. And if you need that money right away and you need all of it, it's definitely going to affect you. Mm. Right. So you want to look at what does this bank offer me? Wire transfers? Because there's a fee f pretty much for everything. It's just a matter of do you see it or not? Right. Right. So you want to, it's your money. Ask, you know, go online. If you're not sure, go into the bank in person, sit down and see what they say. Sometimes the banking people don't even know. Right. You know, because they've never dealt with that. And I had that situation happen. I asked someone about wire transfers from this company and they were like, oh, well, let me look. Oh, we've never had a transfer from Belarus here. Well, how does that work? I was like, I don't know. You, <laughs> you're the banking person. You work here. Yeah, you work here. Well, normally this is what this is. I said, I know that, but this is a different country. How is this going to work? Mm. You know, so you have to ask questions because it's your money. Mm. Okay. Um, anything else mm. come to your mind? It's a lot of good information in that. Yeah, you want to be aware that you keep good records um, and everyone does that differently but at the end of the day we're in the digital age now mm. you have to ask if you just take a gig and you do it fine it's no problem now but if you want to buy a house some property 
they're going to want to know as a musician, well, where are you getting your money from? Right. You just don't show up and have blah, 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 X amount of dollars. They want to see where it came from. Mm -hmm. And trust me, I've dealt with this. Having lived in the Middle East, gone to South America a bunch of times, mm -hmm. there's no problem if there's proof. Mm -hmm. The problem is how much proof. Mm -hmm. And that's why people always look at artists and they say, ooh, oh, right. and they start grinning. It's like, okay, yeah. can you prove this? You need proof on top of the proof on top of the proof. If you have that, you'll be good. If you don't have that, that's when you need to get co-signers and things get a little funny. Mm -hmm. All right. So just remember, ask for a um, receipt. Uh, if you have to create an invoice, there's plenty of websites online. You can do that pretty easily now and know where you keep it. There's clouds now. You can keep everything in, in Google and keep it in order. Title it by date and what the situation is, because when you need it, you need it. You don't have time to be running around. Right. You may have moved three or four times. That box is gone. I, when people want to prove you for something, they don't want to wait. Right. And you don't want to wait. That's the reason why you're there. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, well, it's been a pleasure talking to you. My name is Richard Johnson. My name is Jeremiah Hunt. This is Music Business. What is this? And we'll talk to you later. This program is partially supported by a grant from the Illinois Arts Council Agency.